actual upholstering after we have you stored the seats in the back, seat in the back. And I'm going to show you uh, just how to measure. Um, you've seen that in other videos too, but I have a very simple, for those of you who are just tuning in, very simple way of measuring. What you want to do is indicate with the slash up and down and a slash side to side. This is as you're looking at any piece of furniture, each section of the piece of furniture. So if you're looking at the front of the seat here, this is this mark, front and back, front and back. When you're looking at a seat, a, to, uh, a back that's standing up like this, you, you have a top and a bottom. And then you always have a side to side, okay? So I'm going to measure on the seat, and I'm going to indicate on, I'm going to just draw another line like so, and I'm going to indicate seat. You only have two parts to this piece. Uh, seat and inside back. So um, what I'm going to do is measure the seat front to back first. Terminology like that is very imp important. Uh, when you're orientating your fabric to these. Um, you always want the fabric. This is a mohair, so it does have a nap. And I'll show you. I've already got the pieces cut, just to kind of speed us up a little bit. But I, I will show you how to measure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from the, um, from the back where it's going to be tacked, you see? And then to the front where it's going to be tacked. And then I'm going to add 3 inches to that, which is 34. That's the front to back measurement. That's, with, that, that, that's for stretching, so allow yourself to hold on, to stretch. So those of you who have tried to do upholstery on your own and you use patterns from a sofa or a chair that you've been doing, you've, you've denied yourself the ability to stretch the fabric, okay? So you, it's because that's, that's been cut on the piece. So this is a big problem uh, in the industry, you know, that's why I'm here. Hopefully you'll, you'll be subscribing more and you'll be tuning in uh, upcoming with these online classes because we are going to get really in depth on how to do things because we're going to have apprentices working with us. And I think you're going to learn better from that. Okay, so side to side, furthest point side to side, which happens to be in the front of this. Side to side, we get 31 plus 3. It just happens to be a square. That hardly ever happens. So we have a square piece of fabric, 34 by 34, with that 3 inches. Okay, so we're going to put that aside for now. Let's go to our back. So we measure everything. And then we cut. We cut using our measurements and we think about it. We, we mathematically determine the best use of the fabric, okay, by our measurements. I'll explain that in a second. So up and down, it goes to the back, let's see, and to the back here. I get 30 plus 3 is 33. That's, that's top and bottom, and that's how I'm going to mark my cover, top and bottom, okay? front and back on the seat. Okay, now side to side, furthest measurement, which happens to be, as you can see right here, near the front, where it bows out a little bit. And I'm gonna to try to take into consideration the curve. And I got 29 plus three, we got 32, right? 32, we're gonna call it 33. I do that sometimes just to round it up a little bit. We have a little bit extra, that's okay. So we have two squares, actually. So uh, I've already cut the fabric, so let's let's begin right away. Now I'm going to um, first thing. Let's let, I guess let's stop on the back. Okay. So what we're going to do is um, we have a piece of cotton that we've cut. By the way, you never have to use your scissors to cut cotton. You always do it by hand. At least that's the AAA cotton. Okay. So we got this already a little bit oversized, maybe about three or four inches oversized. We're going to lay that on top like that, freshen it up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to trim where almost where the cotton is now that's on there. But I'll show you there is an exception on the side. Now let's see. I'm just going to kind of trim to, to this piece of wood here. But we don't want to overlap. We want to try to keep that a little clean there, okay? Our fabric, which is a heavy fabric, I'm making a determination now with our fabric, which is a very heavy fabric, that I don't want cotton to bulk that heavy fabric up. The fabric itself will be fine um, as a, if it were thinner fabric, I, I might even be using a piece of muslin on this. Um, it depends on what the fabric is as, as to what you're doing here. Uh, heavier fabrics, you don't need so much muslin. Muslim, um, muslin, <laughs> and here we go, trimming down here. Muslin is, um, usually was introduced in upholstery to cover over uh, horsehair, springs and horsehair, 
And it was used because it's a loose weave, and you can take a regulator, which is that long needle for those of you who don't know, and push it through and work the horse hair. That was mainly what muslin, muslin was used for. Okay, so I'm happy with this cotton. Nice fresh lay. I'm going to check it once more to make sure that there's nothing inside there. Okay? And then I'm going to go grab my fabric, which I'll show you. I've been in the business 42 years. I still mark my cover. I don't want to make a mistake with direction. It's, before it leaves the table, if you've seen in other videos, it's marked. Okay? So there's the top. It's the inside back top. So what I'm going to do is, okay, this is a one-shot deal. Um, usually, the cotton is going to stick to the back of this, okay? So, so what you want to do is try to get this uh, it, as even as you possibly can firsthand. And I'll show you any adjustment. I'll show you a way of adjusting it if it needs to be. I like to tell people, do it like you would a bed sheet. You know, come over here and just kind of like let it fall down like that. Okay? Wow, look at that. Now this is a faux, this fabric is a faux mohair. I've never seen it before. But I have to tell you, it would fool me. It would fool me that it's a synthetic, just feeling it. I mean, it feels, it's heavy, like a mohair, and it feels like a mohair. So, and I'm sure it's gonna wear like a mohair. So I did want to mention, the only thing you're gonna need in a holstery today are a pair of scissors and a pair of side cutters, okay? And your staple gun and staples. So for all of you who are learning, who are, who are new, I always recommend instead of the gun, you can use tack. So everything I'm doing here, you can use tack, six ounce tack, same thing. Okay, but what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to I'm going to pin tack the bottom, okay? Pin staple, which is I'm not putting the staple all the way in, I'm actually turning it on the side. I'm putting three is all you all you need really on the bottom. Now on the top, what I'm gonna do is now always work from either the top to the bottom or bottom to the top, especially when you have a curve, this is a curve. So I'm not going to consider the uh, sides yet at all. I'm going to make sure that I get this tight first, up and down, top and bottom. So I'm going to come this way. I'm going to get a fairly good stretch on this, although it's not my final stretch. I'm going to get a couple of pin staples and turn it over pin tack, be a halfway in tack, just enough to hold the fabric. So you just can't start stapling or tacking. You need, you need to and what you're going to find uh, with these new classes that we're going to have with the beginners, I'm stressing a lot of uh, st stretching. And a lot of times on, on YouTube videos, the upholster is going so fast, you can't see what he or she is doing. And even now, I'm having a hard time following this. But that's why the classes are going to be so good, because in the classes, I break it down. I break the steps down for you people who are new. I really break the steps. For you people who have been upholstering for a while, you actually can learn how to teach from these videos. We might even have a special videos on teaching. Uh, but you need to, in order to teach upholstery, you need to break the steps down. So I'll give you, for instance, while we're talking, okay? Like what I just did here, this, there was a lot of stretching that was going on side to side here when I was pit tapping this, which I did not verbalize. And it's easy for me just to, just to go along and not say anything, but when we're working with the students, I'm going to break that down, and they'll be asking, well, why do I have to do this, or how do I have to pull it? They'll, they'll be asking the same questions you'll be asking, okay, at home. Okay, so now I need to go back and stretch this a little bit more. Now watch what I do. I'm not going to undo this whole thing. I'm going to leave my middle tap, mid tack in, let's say, and we're going to come to the end. I'm going to undo that staple, and I'm going to draw this. Now what I'm doing is, See, oh, I'm, I'm stretching this, I'm using my other hand, I'm a right-handed person, so I'm stretching with my right hand, and I'm stretching two ways, this way and this way. Two-way stretch. It is actually, and then it sh should prep up the rest of, you know, from, if you get the stretch right here, it'll prep up the rest of it so that you can only, you only put it out just a little bit. See that? Leave your middle one in for now, and repeat the process on this side. Okay, I am going to flip this to show you what I'm doing here. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm, now this is where you need a little strength. Okay, so I'm, I'm pulling up, pulling away like this. So it's actually a diagonal stretch, but it's hard for people to visualize that. So what I tell people I break it down. This is what you'll be seeing on the, the new classes much more is a stretch up and a stretch this way, two-way stretch. Up and this way. Okay? And then staples. And that's what that staples in. And and I know I'm confident that I have this right, but for you at home, again, if you're new. Pin tacking is a great tool. You can pin tack this entire thing 
and say, okay, I'm cool, and then tack all the, the rest of the way in or staple it, okay? But the, the fact is, use it as a tool, and, and this is part of my, my complaint about how people teach. They teach, when you teach them with the stable gun, the stable gun really is for advanced people. Yeah, you know, I think you should start with tax. That's my advice for any beginner. Take your time and learn right. Okay, so, now I know I got this where I want it. Now I got to stretch up. Now, now my fabric is really thick. So I'm going to be challenged. This is going to, I have to use a little bit of my muscle here. <laughs> people say, do you have to be strong to be an upholster? I usually say, only if you're doing leather and mohair. You do have to have some strength, but you can make up for lack of strength by body position too. I don't really advise using pliers. Your hands really, you're feeling, you're feeling the fabric with your hands. And look what I'm doing. See how I'm grabbing hold? I'm grabbing hold with my palm and all my fingers, okay? Don't go like this. Don't finger it like this with your thumb and your, and your first finger because you'll create pull marks. So what I'm doing is, and now I'm really getting, look at this. I'm really getting a good stretch on this. Okay, now I'm confident that I have this. See that stretch? I'm going to put those in. Do the other side. Watch, I'm going to turn it this way so you can see. I'm stretching up. You can even give it a little hand. I'm trying to. Visualize when you, what you're doing is if these little springs in there, those little Marshall unit springs, I want those to work with the fabric. I'm, I'm getting just the right tension. There we go. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to do is pop out that milk staple. And I'm going to finish pulling it down. Yeah, it really is nice. I wish you could just reach in and fill this, but I guess that's the only thing I can't do is we can't do it this, at least with technology at this point. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the sides. I'm going to ignore, ignore your corners, ignore your corners. Now you have to get the sides situated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, pull it to the middle first. Actually, you know what? Because this has an angle this way, Go all the way down like so. I want you to pull, pull, stretch down, and pin tack. And then we're going to stretch up and pin tack. And then we're going to get a few pin tacks along the edge here. Let's see what that looks like. So the reason with that that worked out almost it's almost where I wanted perfect the first time. And the reason that you, you don't have to stretch side to side as much because you have a curve. As a matter of fact, the more you stretch, the worse it becomes sometimes. If you're taking your fabric off the curve, be, be very cautious of anything that's curved like that. Oftentimes in upholstery, we have things like this. So let's go to the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch down. See that? Actually, I'm going to position myself a little bit better. We have screw holes that we have to be aware of too. These screw holes right here. So we have to be near the edge of the wood when we put our staples in. Stretch that as an A, you can get another tack over here. We're going to trim that up later. And what that does is that holds it so when you come up here, you have stretching. Notice too that I'm stretching that over here. Stretch and staple. So what I'm doing here is I know that this, this looks fantastic. I like it. And I am going to, because I know it's really good. I'm going to staple it all the way to the side. Now again, for you guys, for the beginning, you can, you can pin staple this, so pin tack this, okay? Okay, so now what we're going to do, go to the other side and finish the other side. I think I could use another little um, stretch. Yeah, right in, in this area. So that's the nice thing about pin tacking or pin stapling. You can say, okay, I need to stretch that a little bit more. You're not committed to the to the tap or the staple. See, I've got a little bit of a stretch, a little bit of a uh, slack here. So I'm gonna undo this one also. And then I'm gonna come up this way. Watch how I get rid of this. I'm gonna stretch this down and stretch. I'm gonna finish my, my two-way stretch a little bit. Now. 
So I am not stretching this as much as I stretch the bottom and the top. Okay, keep that in mind. I love this at hand. This, this is good too. In between my pin tack and then just hit my pin tack down. Do that. Really good. Let me get one more tool, which I forgot to get my wooden mallet. Upholsters use wood mallets to adjust fabrics. It was an old technique when we were using, you know, more of a natural materials like horsehair. This horsehair doesn't always, you see there was a little bump, I saw a little bump. I just hit it out. It's perfect. Okay, now on the bottom, let's do our bottom pleats first. Okay, and I'm going to take a final a staple, a staple over here. And then I'm going to cut the pleat out. Because that's way too much fabric. Way too much fabric. And I got my hole here that I have to worry about. Look how nice that pleated out. Now this is on the bottom, so I'm not overly concerned with this, but I do want to show you that. Before I forget, let's need to make sure there's no fabric around that hole, which is a, see that? Okay, so let's do the other side. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm tacking on this side, one or two, and then I'm taking my scissors. Now be careful when you do this, you don't want to overcut this. And, right. Okay. We've been getting a lot of nice feedback, by the way. I want to thank everybody. Um, it keeps us going and keeps us motivated. We really think that we have an unusual product, our product being an instruction. It's all I'm interested in. I'm going to be giving you tips on where to get supplies and things like that. but. I really am only interested in, at least for this, at this point, the instruction, the good instruction. And um, um, so, okay, so we got this done. Bottom's done. Yay! And we go to the top. Now, the top is different. Now, we, we come to a corner on the bottom, so it gets a pleat, one pleat. When you have a curve, it gets two pleats, okay? So we have a hole here that we, we're probably not going to be able to uh, do anything about, so we hope that we don't get a staple in there. Okay, because we have to be tapping, and it's important to get our cover down. So let me show you how to do uh, two pleats. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to find the center or visualize the center now, and, and then we don't have to measure it. Your eye should tell you where the center of that curve is. Okay, we're going to try to get an even amount of fabric on both sides for our first staple. Okay, now you can almost see our cover wants to tell us what to do. You see that? See how I cover all, all the, you have to remember, pleats always should be running down. Okay, try not to do this, okay? We do, we do this on fronts of seats, okay? But not on a back, you want to make sure both pleats are running down. That's for wearability reasons, okay? If you run a pleat the opposite way, it wears out uh, much quicker, even if it's a mohair. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to cut this out don't want that much. Now people get, you know, you know, you beginners, uh, cutting material is the really the toughest thing, I think. So on something like that, I was instructing as students, the process is much slower. Um, so you'll have to bear with it, but you're going to learn much more, much more with these classes because the students are asking the questions. You know, I'm trying to answer the questions a student would ask, but sometimes that's hard when you're doing things. But the question of the pleats, why, why are pleats always going down on backs and on the front of the seat, it doesn't matter as much. Well, well, it, it doesn't matter because there's a different wear area on the seat. So, um, but we can go into much more detail. Students ask really good questions. Okay, so now I try to go with what the fabric naturally is telling me with the pleats, with these type of pleats. And what, what the fabric is telling me is that it wants to, it wants to look like this. Yes. Uh, trippy. Get the other side to look the same. <laughs> okay. Wow, I really like that. I, this moment here is beautiful fabric to work. Uh, not to stretch, but for pleating, I can tell you it's beautiful. I'm really excited about this job. Okay, so we're well at it. Might as well trim this up a little bit to get that other screw exposed there. So we got the whole side though. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. Wow. Okay, so now we're going to do the same on this side. Line this up. 
in my second. I got a little cotton peeking through that I'm going to trim. Okay, I don't want that to peek through so much. Okay, I'm going to stretch that. That's the end. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this. Sometimes I measure, I measure this. Now, so this last staple here, I could tell you right now, could be a problem. So I'm going to undo that. Don't like that with the pleat. Okay, now, usually what I do is I eyeball this. I think that's the nice thing about upholstery, too. I mean, I'm not going to take out my tape measure on this. I don't think I have to. And I'm going to get another staple here. I need to trim this. I'm just going to look at this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's good. I like that way that is. So I'm going to take this. You know, working with your hands like this, um, I, I, in my opinion, this isn't carpentry, okay? So it doesn't have to be to the eighth of an inch, okay? It, it, does, it has to be pleasing to the eye. I really, I don't even need my tape measure, but I bet if you took the tape measure out and measured this, it's pretty good, it's pretty close. Okay, but be it again, it's if you want, I mean, don't be afraid to measure complete like that. Sometimes I do it. Now, this, now the next thing I am going to measure, I'm going to measure the distance of this pleat, and I'm, I'm got to, I am going to do that. Okay, so let's grab my tape measure. Let's measure the side. Okay, we've got one pleat is longer too, which is kind of neat. Three inches. So let's do three inches. Look at that. I mean, it's the fabric is really telling us what it wants to do, right? It was a, it was exactly a three inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to hold it so I don't lose that nice three inches. Not that I will, because the fabric actually feeded right at the three inch mark on that side. Isn't that something? Ready? Okay. Hold it up to the camera so you can see what I'm doing. And what I'm looking at is I got a little extra little bit of a, I'm going to pull this down here and get another staple right in there. And I am going to take another visual on this. I'm going to put it a little higher. Now, you should have a regulator. I'm using one of my scissors, but a regulator is probably better for that. trim this. Okay, this staples you can take out that did its job. Trim this up. Make sure that we get a whole opening. So we're going to take this over. No, I'm going to scrutinize this just a little bit more. I'll take my hand and do my final little adjustments. Scrutinize that a little bit more. I think that this pleat, I think it's perfect. I really, not perfect, but it's, it's what I, I think it looks great. I think it looks great. So I'm going to pull this on the side. So I, I think it's important, though. It brings up a good point. Uh, you have to be the, your, your your critic. You, you're the worst critic of your own work. So I think you should go over it like I did. So I do. I one more time. I'll, I'll go over it and fail it to make sure there's a little lump there. I'm gonna give it a little hit there. Hit. I'm really happy with that. Now I'm even more happy. So I'll put that aside. Give it about a little extra pieces and go to our seat. Now notice how I'm always working from the front of the of whatever I'm doing usually. That's how I start. Okay, um, so now I'm going to get my cotton. My nice triple A beautiful cotton and just lay that right across. Oh, I, I wish you could feel this because this feels really good. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to trim this near the bottom of the edge. Okay. And okay, I don't really want the bulk of the cotton to come over my edge. Okay, I need, I, 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 I'm, I'm coming about, probably about halfway in that wood rail, okay? So here we go. Okay. 
fashion that by hand, do not use your scissors for cotton, because you feather that, you're feathering out the edges, and that's what you're doing when you're hand in cutting this, when you when you cut it with your scissors. So this is again a question a student who asks, well how come you don't use your scissors? Because it leaves an edge on it. It's better to have a feathered edge on this. Look better with the fabric. So the scrap cotton uh, we can use for other things like outside. You know, stuff it outside. Okay, so now I, I'm good about that. I bring my, myself back to the front. And now do you remember that we marked our front? That's why we mark our front, okay? So we don't lose ourselves. It's the same time too. I mean, I have a question, okay, I have to look at it again. Okay, I know that the back is rounded. But you know, the fact is I have a front marked on that, so there's no question. Okay, then I go to my fabric, which I already have cut, and look, front seat, okay? That's so important. Now there's no question. Uh, you know, I don't want to be held up by questioning my fabric direction, okay? So now I'm gonna do the same thing like a sheet. I'm gonna kind of cover it over like so. Okay, I'm gonna start from the front and I'm going to pin tack, pin staple down. There. And then push it, pull it to the back. It's almost like working leather, this high. And then I'm going to get a couple of pin staples in the back. Maybe a little bit more. Add an extra one because I'm going to be stretching to the front. And I'm not concerned with my sides. I'm not concerned with my corners. Okay, that comes later, like the back. Now, I, I'm, I am working front to back, back to front. Okay, now I'm in the front again. Now, what I'm going to do is leave a middle tack in, and I'm going to undo. I always go to the right side because I'm right handed, but it does not matter what side you start on. Okay, now I'm going to be leaving this open, my corner open. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch down. Now I'm contending with a very heavy metal system of springs, okay? So it needs a little bit of a torque. And then staple, now look what I did, I did two staples. I did a staple there, and I did a staple here, because that really gets the fabric tight. So now I only have to be concerned from the middle out with a downward stretch. Stretch. And each time, you should stretch and staple. Stretch and staple. Repeat over here. Same thing. I, I can't tell you how fabulous this is coming out. How nice and uniform this is. You know, notice what I'm doing with my hand. I'm, I'm checking to make sure there's no foreign object in there. Although I already checked. Then we get another staple here, two staples. And then I can come over here, palm this, and bring this down. Staple and then staple. All right. Very satisfied with that. Now we're going to go to the front, I mean the back, and we're going to repeat the same thing. We want to get these pin tabs. Going to stretch out. Don't, you don't want to come all the way to the edge. You're working in a small area here, actually, front to back. And because these there, the seats were built in the 30s, we're talking about the average height to a male, I think, back then was about five foot four. And the ladies were about five foot two, maybe a little taller than that. But uh, and these seats, um, I think I can get one half of a cheek in right now myself. But uh, these are very small seats. <laughs> you, know, you go into the theater now, and we have recliners that are uh, the size of sofas for crying out loud. We have, we have, as a society, we've gotten bigger, haven't we? Which is a challenge for upholsters, let me tell you. Body size and shape. Okay, so I'm going to stretch this side to side, and then I'm getting a few more in there, and now I've got my back. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim this up just a little bit more. Okay. Now, ignoring the corners, I'm going to come to the back. This is the back, and I'm on a side, okay? I'm going to stretch to the back, stretch to the back. Okay, this is like a tell it right now, folks. This is going to be challenging. But I'm up to it. I told my son, let's get moving. I got a lot of energy today. I don't know where it comes from sometimes. Okay, so I'm trying to stretch this way and this way. And I'm going to pin tap. 
And then I'm going to go to the front, all the way to the front. And I'm going to stretch it. Now, if I've done a good job stretching, I should be able just to pull this down and staple it all the way. Cool. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So it's important to do your stretching. Start your stretching to the back first, okay? Stretch the back. Okay, get an extra staple in there. Get an extra pin tack down there. Okay, I'm going to take this. Stretch this out. Don't need that anymore. Stretch this out. Oh boy. I ain't got my workout today. Can you imagine doing 5,000 of these? Too tired at the end of the day. Alright, I'm happy with this. I'm happy with the way this is stretched out, except except this part. I need to stretch this more. You see this? I'm a little little weak here. I'm getting tired. <laughs> Come on, Kevin, have a protein bar. Throw me a protein bar, Pat. Come on. Get all tired there. Alright, I'm just gonna undo this part because I think I can stretch that more. I'm gonna show you. I was a little weak there. Need to stretch. There we go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Over here. I'm going to undo a couple more of these. So, for the, all of you pin tacking out there, you say, see, you shouldn't have been pin tacking. You wouldn't have to take the staples out. Pin tack is such a great tool. I can't emphasize that enough. <clears throat> not committed. Put the tacks in halfway, you're not committed, right? When you put it all the way in, like I just did, you're committed to that. And now I have to take, I have to start to take them out. Pull that down a little bit more. Happy. Okay. And now we've got our corners, okay? I, I think I'm going to start my back corners first because they're a little easier. <laughs> So the, the front corners are going to have a double pleat, just like the backs did. Okay, the, the, uh, the front and the back, so I think we can do, no, on the, excuse me, on the backs here, we're going to have to do a double pleat too, because it's round. They're both rounded, whereas that was uh, came to a sharp point on the back. So let's start our backs, get in our middle. Already I see a problem staple, so I'm going to take that out. So you need a little bit more, you need a room. To work your pleats, okay. If you've got a staple that wandered a little bit too far, it would be in your way. So what I'm going to do here is, if you can see this, I have to take an even amount of that on both sides, make sure, and then make sure this is smooth, as smooth as you can get it when you staple this. Don't you know I'm going to sideways staple like that. I'm not committing to a, a horizontal staple. I'm that's a vertical staple, it's just to give me a little bit more room to work, okay. So now what I'm going to do, look at this. So I'm going to cut a little bit of this out. I'm going to cut a little of this. I'm not going to cut the other one yet. Come up. Yeah. I'm, going to get, I'm going to cheat a little bit and get a staple on this side. Watch. And then I'm going to bring my plate, get rid of that cotton. And bring my plate off like that. Oh my goodness. It's another strategy to work on the plates first because you know what you're getting into on the front, which needs to be a little bit more. Careful on the front. I'm going to stretch this again, and I'm going to get a staple right here. And I'm going to cut this. Down. Look at this, folks. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? This is great. I love working a nice fabric. Okay, probably a lesson there. The better the quality of the fabric, usually, the nice the nicer it is to work. Not always. Try working a silk taffeta. Those are hard to work. Okay, so look at now my pleat. I want my pleat. I'm gonna go get my regulator before I go any further. Hold on a second. Pause the camera for a minute. Grab my regulator. Regulators I use just to kind of tuck fabric in. And look, look at that. Are you kidding me? I need to take our regulator, just kind of smooth it out like that. We got a little bit of an uh, extra little bit here, that little slack that I'm going to try to get up with my regulator. 
bit by just kind of poking it here. Look at that. The small adjustments are cool. I'm glad this happened actually so you could see the other uses of the regulator. See what it's doing? See how fast I'm doing it like that. Beautiful. I'm like pretty much happy with that. Look at that. Oh, yeah. I like that. Okay, let's do the other one. Okay, again, I, I see a staple that wandered over here a little bit more. Staple that up. Make sure, let me just for the benefit of you guys, just get, okay, I am going to get one more staple here. Just staple that a little bit. And then, get this. Yeah, a little strength helps. If you're going to do a job like this, you better make sure you have your Wheaties in the morning. Because I'm feeling my muscles right in here. It's a good workout. Get the staple there. Take a look down here. All right. Get that trim. Don't trim both pleats at the same time, always one at a time. Why? Because if you make a mistake, it's easier to fix a mistake with one cut than two. Okay? Whew. I'm loving this. I really am. It's, even though I'm working harder, it's, it's coming out nice, so I'm, I'm happy. You never know, especially on camera, what's going to happen, right? And it's a challenge for us when we're making our live classes. Boy, the pressure's really on that. But you guys will forgive me, I'm sure, if I make a mistake. Now notice what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make the pleats meet at the end here. See that? Okay. Trimming down here. Take a look at this one second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be critical of myself in a minute. I want to see how I didn't measure. See, I didn't measure these pleats. So what I'm gonna do is I like the spread um, back here. And again, you know, you're almost like on a trial. This is not gonna be seen at hardly at all um, from the back. But you're kind of a trial for your fronts. So I didn't measure that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure this. I like this pleat. I like the way this pleat is further away works. So I'm going to measure that. That was three and a half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually. So and this is three. So I, I, my eye picked up a half of an inch difference. Here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo this and I'm going to go back. It's okay to be critical of your own work. You really. Don't want your cusp to pick up something like that. Not that I, I don't know many people that would pick up a half of an inch like that, but I did. And that's enough. I'm going to undo this. I'm going to go back. And it'll teach me a lesson on the front to make sure that I measure it, right? Like I did on the, on the back. Okay, this one was fine. I'm going to roll this one out a little bit more. Actually, it's going to require me taking this one up too. It's probably this one. Hold on one second. Okay. Really 
for that now. Three and a half. Very good. Looks a little better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my regulator. Now, now sometimes we hand stitch these pleats down. Um, but I, I don't think I recommend that that too much. Um, if you're not happy with the with the pleat, take your regulator. If you, I, I wasn't too happy with with um, with that. I want it tighter. Okay, so I'm taking my regulator and putting it inside him, stretching, stretching the pleat so it won't look better. I come here and stretch my pleat again. These aren't even going to be seen. So, um, but I'm practicing for the front. That's what I'm doing here. Okay, that's straight up, but, and these aren't. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in here. My practice, please. <laughs> okay. I'll just flip that a little bit more. I think I could do this by hand. It's a little tricky, you know, and, and again, <clears throat> if you were pin tacking, um, all you people who pin tack exclusively and then not staple until you know it's perfect, that would be a good thing. We're happy with that now. So let's go to the front, and now we need to really focus, okay, because the front is what's going to be seamless, okay? So what we want to do is undo this, this tack that was used to stretch the front side to side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my middle. Okay. That's it. And I'm going to get a staple here. Out. Make sure you don't cut the, the wrong side here when you're doing this. Make sure you don't cut the pleat. It doesn't need to be, a lot of this, this is bulk. You, you can't just pull this down to it. You do need to cut this. That's where a lot of people get a little nervous. Can you imagine, you know, I don't have any more extra fabric on this. Fabric is gone. If you make a mistake here, it's kind of tragic. <laughs> Get new fabric. Fronts seem to be working out um, a little bit easier than the back is for some reason. Sometimes there's no explanation. I have the option of hand stitching these pleats too. I don't like hand stitching pleats, but rather I, I like to see the hand work. One. So I'm going to undo that and bring that over a little bit. So I'm really being picky. And with that, that looks better, doesn't it? But this is a little high. I like I like this pleat. I'm going to fashion the other side after that first pleat. So I'm already thinking of the other side. And I'm going to fix this. I'm going to go in and I'm going to tighten this up just a little bit more. Not having as much fun as I was <laughs> on the back. The back one went together good, which makes sense because the back's a little bit thinner. Um, the seat has more play, so you have to be patient with yourself to know why things are harder. It's because there's more play, there's more spring work in the seat. Okay, now I like that. Look at that. That almost almost went down. It's gonna go like this, do a little fold like that. That's perfect. That's it's as perfect as I'm gonna get it put that way. Okay, I'm gonna get it. <clears throat> Not machine perfect, it's hand perfect. There's a difference. 
which I like the way it looks. I'm not going to fuss over that anymore, so I'll just give it a little bit like that. <coughs> okay, now we're going to go to this side. Give it a quick stretch in the middle, because that side was staple. And then I'm going to look at my first one, stand up here, look at that first tree. Okay, I, I see something right away that I don't like, and I need to stretch this again. You believe this? With all the, with all the force that I used, right? I need to stretch this even more, on, especially on this side. I might even go back and do the other side, which is really fighting me now, this, this guy. But it's all, it's all, what I'm doing here is to make this seat last. I'm thinking about something that's going to last a good long time. So I'm just going to stretch this a little bit. Call upon some more strength. Get sick of that. Reason I'm, you know, a couple of red flags on my kids. I would have never been able to get that pleat like this pleat if I didn't stretch this tablet more. Okay. So, and I know why that happened. On the right side, as a right handed person, I'm getting more torque on this, on the right side. On the left side, you all should be paying attention to that for yourself. Okay? You don't get the, uh, if you're a right or left handed person, you're going to fade on one side. So you have to kind of adjust for that. But it's just going to take practice. Okay? So, I'm going to make a cut in here. Again, imagine doing 5,000 of these. How tired would you be at the end of the day? Okay. My regulator in there. Work there. That's pretty good. Now I'm going to do this. Two plates. Sometimes it's put on the plate, which it should be, but then you forget, you get it all set, and then you look over, and, and it's on the side, and it's, it's loose. Stretching it down, I'm holding it. Stay Look. Cool. Don't have to undo anything. Wow. I think 
think I'm just about done. I think I want to make one more adjustment here. I'm pulling this this way. I think I can roll that plate out a little bit. See how this plate is up a little bit? I think I can tighten that. I'm going to be a little fussy. I'm going to try to take my regulator and just stretch it a little. There I like that. It looks just like the other one now. So I'm going to turn this over. We're going to trim this up. And so this is a very unusual project where it doesn't have cane brick. It has those metal pieces that we're going to be putting on. So let me get set up for that. At this point, we'll cut and we'll go to the metal pieces. So I have my, um, my bottom of the seat marked really well. I have the front. It goes here, and I have all my screws where they should go with tape. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to undo the tape. I'm not going to undo the front yet. I have those on there, so I wouldn't lose them. Um, this one doesn't have. I think I'm not going to put tape where I don't have a screw. Tape, just I take this out. Show what I mean. Everywhere there's tape, there's a screw. And I have my front line. So now I'm going to line up my metal piece onto it. I don't even need to pile it. I'm so confident that if I, if I just line this up you know, with, the, with the air holes, also with the air holes in the as we saw, that I can just screw this in. So I have my screw gun ready to go. Hopefully, we'll just pile it right through. That's ready to be put on the frame. Well, let me put this over here for now. And let's do the back piece. I did the same thing on the back. Uh, make sure that there's no loose staple on any pairs. Okay, we got the back piece. Screws up. For some reason, they didn't have screws at, the, at these corners, and I think the reason for that is um, there's a piece of metal in there. So we're going to put a piece of tape there, a piece of tape there. Get rid of this cotton. Everywhere there's a screw, I'll put a piece of tape.
Okay, and we're all ready to put these attached into the frame. So there we are, finished with our vintage Art Deco theater seat. And I don't know about you, but that was a hard job. That was really uh, pulling a lot of mohair and pulling the pleats. And, and I think what I'm going to do now is watch my favorite show, my favorite movie of all time, which is It's a Wonderful Life. Time for a rest. But there you go. I mean, it's beautiful. I, I'm glad we restored the springs. And I'm glad we, we brought it back to its original luster. Um, and I, as I mentioned while we were filming, can you imagine doing 5,000 of these, you know, and I'm, you know, I get tired after this one, you can imagine. So you, you do have to have some, you know, real strength on some pieces, not all. I would say mohair and leather are probably going to be your hardest challenges. But I think the lesson, one of the big lessons I learned on this even now, is that pin tacking is still a great tool, um, pin stapling or pin tackling, till you know that you got it right. You can keep doing that over and over again. But anyhow, there we are with the vintage theater uh, seed, and I, I hope that our next project is going to be as interesting, and I think it will be. It's actually, I think, one of the first recliners ever made. So off we go. See you then.